January 31, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 3 and 4 from the Old Testament. Now Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, to Horeb. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from within a bush. He looked, and the bush was ablaze with fire, but it was not being consumed. So Moses thought, I will turn aside to see this amazing sight. Why does the bush not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to look, God called to him from within the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. God said, Do not approach any closer. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. He added, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. I have come down to deliver them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a land that is both good and spacious, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the region of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now, indeed, the cry of the Israelites has come to me, and I have also seen how severely the Egyptians oppress them. So now go, and I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Moses said to God, Who am I, that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He replied, Surely I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that I have sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you and they will serve God on this mountain. Moses said to God, if I go to the Israelites and tell them the God of your fathers has sent me to you and they ask me, what is his name? What should I say to them? God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, you must say this to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, you must say this to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial from generation to generation. Go and bring together the elders of Israel and tell them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, appeared to me, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I have attended carefully to you and to what has been done to you in Egypt, and I have promised I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, to a land flowing like milk and honey. The elders will listen to you, and then you and the elders of Israel must go to the king of Egypt and tell him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. So now let us go three days, journey into the wilderness, so that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go, not even under force. So I will extend my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will do among them. And after that, he will release you. I will grant this people favor with the Egyptians, so that when you depart, you will not leave empty-handed. Every woman will ask her neighbor and the one who happens to be staying in her house for items of silver and gold and for clothing. You will put these articles on your sons and daughters. Thus, you will plunder Egypt. Moses answered again, And if they do not believe me or pay attention to me, but say the Lord has not appeared to you, the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A staff? The Lord said, Throw it to the ground. So he threw it to the ground, and it became a snake, and Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to Moses, Put out your hand and grab it by the tail. 
So he put out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. The Lord also said to him, Put your hand into your robe. So he put his hand into his robe, and when he brought it out, there was his hand, leprous like snow. He said, Put your hand back into your robe. So he put his hand back into his robe, and when he brought it out from his robe, there it was, restored like the rest of his skin. If they do not believe you or pay attention to the former sign, then they may believe the latter sign. And if they do not believe even these two signs or listen to you, then take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water you take out of the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. Then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not an eloquent man, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave a mouth to man, or who makes a person mute or deaf or seen or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? So now go, and I will be your mouth, and I will teach you what you must say. But Moses said, O oh my Lord, please send anyone else whom you wish to send. Then the Lord became angry with Moses, and he said, What about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he can speak very well. Moreover, he is coming to meet you, and when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. So you are to speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And as for me, I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you both what you must do. He will speak for you to the people, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were his God. You will also take in your hand the staff with which you will do the signs. So Moses went back to his father-in-law Jethro and said to him, Let me go, so that I may return to my relatives in Egypt and see if they are still alive. Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. The Lord said to Moses and Midian, Go back to Egypt, because all the men who were seeking your life are dead. Then Moses took his wife and sons and put them on a donkey, and headed back to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the staff of God in his hand. The Lord said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you do before Pharaoh all the wonders I have put under your control. But I will harden his heart, and he will not let the people go. You must say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. And I said to you, Let my son go, that he may serve me. But since you have refused to let him go, I will surely kill your son, your firstborn. Now on the way, at a place where they stopped for the night, the Lord met Moses and sought to kill him. But Zephora took a flint knife, cut off the foreskin of her son, and touched it to Moses' feet, and said, Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. So the Lord let him alone. At that time she said, A bridegroom of blood, referring to the circumcision. The Lord said to Aaron, Go to the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him at the mountain of God and greeted him with a kiss. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs that he had commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron went and brought together all the Israelite elders. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people, and the people believed. When they heard that the Lord had attended to the Israelites and that he had seen their affliction, they bowed down close to the ground. God, I have heard so many sermons and read so many books about this chapter, you know, with Moses uh, saying he is not worthy of what you're calling him to do and, and how with you we're worthy of anything that you ask us to do. And and I love those sermons, and they're really powerful, and, and I love that interaction between you and Moses, and it speaks just volumes to our lives of, we can't do anything, but with you, we can do all things. But there's one part of this that I had always glossed over, God, the part where you try and kill Moses, <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't quite understand exactly everything that was going on there. So I did a, a little bit of 
research, well, I did a lot of research, and your promise with Moses' fathers, uh, your blessing and covenant with them, includes a promise from them of circumcision uh, on the eighth day of their sons and the, and the uh, males in their household as well after they're born. And apparently Moses hadn't done that. And so his wife stepped in, immediately knew what was happening, stepped in, circumcised her son really quick, um, and then touched it to Moses' feet uh, in humility. Um, and you accepted that, that offering from her. And so today, God, I want to pray for the, for the wives out there, for the women who are in relationships with husbands, whether they be godly men or they haven't gone into a relationship with you yet, God. We are called to respect our husbands. If you have blessed us with a husband in our life, we're called to respect him. It doesn't say to respect him under these circumstances. It says respect him and it says respect him period <laughs> it doesn't say respect him only when he loves you it doesn't say respect him only when he's doing all the right things it doesn't say respect him um, when he is acting like a godly man it says respect him so I think of Sephora in, in this situation and how terrified she must be that at the sudden realization that potentially all of them were about to be killed by God, including her son, because of a mistake, intentional or otherwise, that her husband had done. And instead of panicking or freaking out or yelling at her husband, why didn't you do this? You know on day eight, day eight we're supposed to do this. Instead of doing any of that, she immediately came in and, and saved her husband with the foreskin of her son. Respecting Moses' authority in that relationship and his relationship with God. But more importantly in that, we see a woman who is showing humility to her Lord. And God, to me, that is the most exciting part. Because not all of us have, have husbands. But that you come first in our lives. That what you command us to do is more important than anything else that anyone else has ever asked us to do. Or will ask us to do. And Sephora knew that in order to save her son and her husband, she knew what she had to do. But more importantly, she was doing it because you had commanded it. And so today, for, for all of the people listening who are married, I pray for that respect to come out of the mouths and the actions of the, the wives and for the, the husbands to love their wives, even when they're not lovable. I pray that both of them will seek you first. And by seeking you first, that that will reflect in their actions of their marriage and how they treat the people that they love. Our words are so powerful, God. They can be used for pain and they can be used for good and they can be used to uplift people and they can be used to share your amazing love. So today I ask for strengthening in those marriages. I ask for tongues to be held unless there's respect and love that's about to come out of them. I ask for strength in those marriages that they can be a reflection of what marriage looks like. Out coming out of two God-honoring people. And I ask for strength in that marriage that if there's children in that marriage, they can see what it looks like to act properly with respect and love towards each other because we have your heart, God. Thank you so much for these powerful words that you're sharing with us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.